What's up, guys? I am freaking exhausted. It's been crazy since the uh, Hurricane Nydia that came through on September 1st. I mean, it's been insanity. I've been working double shifts nonstop. Pure insanity. I uh, wanted to do more videos, but that rolled through. I was responding to a 9-1 call, and uh, I lost my damn vehicle. It's it happened all it, it happened so fast with Floyd and Irene. They were like over a period of uh, 24 hours that the rain just dumped on us and dumped on us and dumped on us. With this, it happened in about six hours. So I mean, the amount of people that needed rescuing and flooded cars and everything like that, it was just insanity. I mean, I got my car as far as I could. Uh, and then it just, it, it couldn't take it anymore. And that was the beginning of the nightmare. I ended up working 20 hours that shift, uh, 17 the next, and then 16, seven days a week since. Uh, <clears throat> it's been, uh, it's been insanity. You know, <laughs> I had a self rescue. Uh, I had, the only thing I took with me was my radio, which in hindsight was stupid because the radio is tied to the car's repeater. Um, and w w funny story about that is a house ends up exploding and I, w I, I, I self rescue and I'm in a section of town that <clears throat> is like an island basically. And I really, nobody could get to. So I was the only one really there. Besides people that were stranded and everywhere I was going, people were asking me, how do we get out of here? How do we get? And I'm just like, I, like you can't, you just got to stay put, stay put. Uh, and the flooding lasted 24 hours and I was able to walk and eventually get to the one house explosion. Uh, I was able to walk, but there's no way you could have drove there. I was able to walk just because I knew people would be there. Coworkers and stuff like that would be there and I'd be able to coordinate with them and get with, get with other, you know, other people. But it was, it was, uh, dude, it was, it, so the funny part about the radio is, so I, I take my radio with me. I leave everything else in my car, uh, except for the stuff that I carry on me. <clears throat> take my radio, my cell phone, my wallet. Uh, and, and the stuff I carry on me for work. And I end up walking three miles to this house explosion. And I'm there and out of nowhere, I get a, a call on my cell phone and it's my dispatcher. And, and they're like, listen, uh, your emergency beacon's going off on your radio. We've been trying to reach you for the last, you know, half hour on your radio. You're not responding. Is everything okay? And I was like, yeah, I told you guys. I told you guys, my car's, it's under three feet of water right now. <laughs> like, uh, the, the, I mean, I literally got stuck in two feet of water. And by the time I got a half a mile down the road, I turned around, the thing was underwater. <laughs> you know, like, that's how fast it was. It was unbelievable. So they were paranoid because my radio, I guess, when the water went over it, it, it hit the emergency which is like an emergency button where if you can't talk, you just hit this red button on the radio and it basically tells them that you're in danger. And so I'm assuming it shorted that out or something like that. It's, I mean, it's kind of hilarious, but everything in that car got destroyed, everything. So, you know, you know, there was certain things that you could take out and, and you'd have to clean and grease and stuff like that and it would be fine. But other than that... It, dude it's been insanity and then other and then more houses are exploding then the next day houses are exploding it was pure insanity because the floodwaters were so high these foundations are collapsing ripping the gas services off the wall and it was uh it was a it was a it was a big it was a big fast one so areas that normally don't flood flooded because it was so fast and uh I, i'm i'm a little tired guys so today's really been my first day where I've been able to make a video and I kind of been just resting, resting and stuff like that. But I figured I would make a video about the Mark 18 that I've been working on for the last, I don't know, six months or whatever. 
Uh, it's a Daniel Defense, obviously, Mark 18 or MK18, as I like to say, and get flamed for by basement dwellers. Um, has a tangle down, tangle down grip. This grip is literally probably like 10 or 12 years old. I want to say it's about 10 or 12 years old. This is when I remember when these, I want to say came out. I got this back in the day. Uh, it's got your standard grip. I'll probably be switching this out with the Myad uh, and Tan and then the um, Magpul flared trigger guard. We'll see. It's got the Magpul SL stock, Mo SL stock. I like this stock because it's minimalist. I had the B5 Sot Mod stock. I didn't like the B5 Sot Mod stock for some reason. I just didn't like it. This SL stock, first of all, is super, super, super tight. I kind of like that because I don't really adjust my stock that much. Montech backup site. Uh, you've got your EO tech. It's got a stock charging handle from Daniel Defense. I probably, I think this is some kind of gas busters because it does have the hole drilled. I'm not too sure. It might, it's probably their version, but I'm probably going to change this out. I don't know. I just don't like the way it looks, and I think I want to get a tan one. I'll probably go with a Geisley or something like that. Uh, just because it's got like it's got the EO tech, uh, EXPS 3 2 or whatever it is, it's the night vision one with the 68 MOA circle and then the two dots instead of the one dot, two dots, one on top of the other. Pretty good. The Unity Tactical Riser now, I, I got that because, like I said, I like shooting under night vision and stuff like that. That's fun. This helps. This also helps because I have somewhat of a bad neck and bad back um uh, nothing crazy i mean they don't bother me all the time but i've injured them over the years and this basically uh i'm able to get comfortable looking through this without having to scrunch down or anything like that and i mean the way i kind of shoot anyway is i'm not so much all the way out on the shoulder as i am above my right like right next to my right peck. I don't know how you explain it. So I don't go all the way out to my shoulder anyway. Uh, Unity hot button. This hot button is run through the Scalar Works front sight. Because the Scalar Works front sight has these scallops on each side. I'm able to run the wire directly, directly through. Which is nice. I don't have it zip tied yet. Because I've been uh, playing with where it's going to go. And this is I think going to be it's permanent, permanent location. And uh, that works pretty good. The uh, the mall is going to be going here, which is why I kind of went with this. Now, what I do like about the Unity Hot Button is that it is a uh, temporary. So you just press it for temporary, and then you click it for full time. So that's full time, and then you could just you could just tap it for momentary. Almost like the mod buttons. The momentary is almost like the, all the mod buttons that I have. I have tons of mod buttons. And I have a bunch of these hot buttons. I also have the uh, the one, the skinny one that's uh, M lock. I didn't like how that looked on my Super Duty, so I went. And I'm going with this right now. I have the Fusion one that's kind of flat. It's like a mod light button. It's flat and it has the the light wing, but that doesn't bring it out far enough. So I've got a uh, an M lock uh, T Rex arms light bar like I do on this one, which I do like. I like how this pushes it out. And just for, I grabbed this can because this can is the fattest of my uh, dead airs. So I shoot with with the cans on all, all, the, all, all the time. So, but you can see the, the clearance, 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 no problem. And then you can see how far out, um, this comes and everything like that. It, it's, you know, and, and this is, doesn't flex at all. You know, you don't have to worry about that. I mean, it's obviously flexes if you go like that, but, but brings it out nice and far. You only light up a little bit of the, uh, suppressor. I like that. Usually this one <clears throat> is going to be running the, uh, Sandman S, uh, M, the military tan one. That they did for a military contract. I like the dead airs. I, you know, the dead airs are about 200 bucks cheaper on average than the uh, surefires. And I like the 
I, I don't know. I just like the dead airs better. I like their attachment method. I, it's, you know, these can go between so many things. Even like my my AK, my AKV right here can. Granted, it can't. This is a. Uh, this is not the right size can for it, as far as your diameter. But with the with the mini chemo, you can put this on the Wolfman, and then you have a break so that's why i like the chemo on the dead air i really like that and, and the fact that you can put it on so many different things and things like the uh like this is my uh super duty and the super duty i'm going to be getting the like i said the the further light bar on this but that's a different video but yeah this is the nomad like i said it's the fattest one i own so I figured I would bring that out. But I like it. I mean, I think it works good. No complaints at all. Uh, I'm not sure if I said this Tango Down is like 12 years old or whatever. Uh, I had it on an old AR. And then it just, it literally just sat in my, you know, I have a crate filled with fucking uh, just spare AR parts. I would show you, but I've got one, two, three, four, five, six AR stocks from Magpul here uh, that I don't even use. I just bought... And don't even use all brand new. But I like it. It works pretty good. Uh, the, I'm like I'm going to be getting the mall. So just waiting on the mall to get back in stock in certain places that I like to shop. Uh, but other than that, I mean, you know, I'm in no rush to get the mall. No rush at all. Uh, I don't need it, you know, that desperately right now. Eventually I will. But this works, I mean, I, I, I'm i pretty damn happy with it. Really damn happy with it. Uh, you know, nothing crazy. I took it shooting last week and uh, gave it a little bit of a bath. Try to clean off the grime because this thing was getting real grimy. And uh, it's amazing how grimy you can see it's wearing out in there and how grimy they get. But this one I used a new solution for today. Some stuff that a gunsmith and armor told me to use and it came out pretty damn it doesn't have that shine like this does but it came out pretty damn good i know a lot of people i know a, a lot of people like to keep their guns dirty looking so they could tell you how much they shoot on youtube that always cracks me up the only gun like my glock like this glock 44 when i first got this when I first got this, everybody said they were pieces of shit and this and that. And I put about a thousand rounds through this before cleaning it and it ran fine. And so far, this one has run fine. It probably has about 7,500 rounds through it. I like practicing with it. You can see the triggers kind of wearing, but anyway, all right. So I like cleaning my guns. I don't, I don't bring them on video all dirty. So I can be like, yeah, I'm an operator. Look at how dirty my gun is. Yeah. You motherfucking plebs. Your guns aren't this dirty because you don't shoot. You know, I'm not one of these uh, fucking clown shows. I, I don't... I, listen, this is... Uh, these are all... Every one of these is ready to save my life if it need be. If it need be. Um, every one of them. So, I always... When, I, when I'm done training with them, at the range, I clean the living daylights out of them. I will spend the time. I'll watch some TV while I'm eating dinner. Even I will sit there and I will clean these. Um, because... I'm not looking to just add oil to it and just keep on going until it needs oil. Well, because the one time I need it, it might need oil. And uh, I'm a douchebag that's been sitting there. I've shot 3,000 rounds without cleaning it because operator, asshole. You know, so no, no, no. That's just stupid. Keep a clean rifle so you have a reliable rifle. I, I've never understood that. I, I, I never understood that. But I know why people do that. Because when they go on YouTube, they want to show how... Oh, yeah, this is definitely... I definitely shoot. I definitely shoot. Look at how dirty this is. Like, I actually got a funny joke video that I want to do where I open up the gun and basically charcoal falls out of it. But I was like, eh. <laughs> it was just too much work. And then cleaning that up would be a nightmare. But at least then I could be like, look how much carbon buildup I've got in here. Uh, Yeah, it, it was funny. But I decided not to do it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but that's it. Uh, nothing crazy. Um, 
and if you couldn't see where it's got my information laser etched on it then that is excellent because that means it is perfectly where I want it all right guys that's it have a good one uh it's been crazy love you bye